We continue our development of a network that performs controlled data flow. In the previous video, we defined a data control problem requiring data conversion and data channeling. In that video, we designed the required data circuit. We now address the problem of how to provide the necessary controls. For our design, we need three control inputs. The first active high control input will shift serial data out of the source and into the converter. The second control input selects the destination. This input is 0 to select X or 1 to select Y. The third control input is an active high parallel load of the selected destination. The sequence of required control inputs is best obtained using a state diagram. We will use a partial state diagram involving only those states required for the specific task. For each state, we will apply a state number starting at zero. These numbers will help us keep track of the sequence of states. Each state shows the values of the three control inputs as set by the user, along with the status of all of the registers. We will at the same time keep track of our data flow in the original data circuit. We will also keep track of our current control input values. For the first operation, we will set the serial shift of the source and converter to 1 and the parallel load of the destinations to 0. We will also select the destination Y in readiness for the parallel load. Dashes indicate don't care values. At the next clock pulse, the source A will shift its rightmost bit into the data converter C. The control inputs will remain the same for the next clock trigger. After the second clock trigger, the second shift has occurred. The bits destined for Y have now been shifted into the data converter. It is now necessary to change the control inputs in order to disable the serial shift and enable the parallel load. At the next clock trigger, the contents of the data converter are loaded into the destination Y. We now select the destination X. And repeat the two shifts. The two bits destined for X have now been loaded into the data converter. We now proceed to load the destination X. Once this is done, the bits originally in the source A have now been successfully transferred to the two destinations X and Y. We now need to supply this sequence of control inputs to our data circuit. In the next video, we will see how to do this in an automated way.